say the best part of being able to homeschool was the time we got to cook together. So while we were cooking, we were reading. We were determining what's good for us, what's not good for us. So we had health and science in the kitchen um, and we made a, a brain out of dough. It was, <laughs> I'll tell you, the kitchen looked like who did it and why. And I was just like, oh boy. So but yeah. Um, and then if I had to give, I guess, um, homeschooling families advice as well, if you could afford to kind of get help in regards to like, let's say cleaning up. So if you know you're going to do a science project every Friday and you can afford to have maybe a cleaning crew come out once a month, let them, let them come out. We don't have to do everything. <laughs> we don't have to do everything. Let them come out, help us. And um, that'll give you more time to be with your child as well. And that's when we used to take the field trips. When uh, the cleaning crew came in, we'd go out on a field trip. So that when, by the time we came home, it was like magic or something. <laughs> <laughs> There's yes. nothing that makes you feel more powerful than being out homeschooling for a day with your child and they, you know, the home's being cleaned and you get back home and you're like, ha, I did two things today. It was really good. <laughs> yes. so, Were y'all a yeah. part of any co-ops or anything? Um, the only co-op that we did join was um, Home Educators Leading the Way. So mm-hmm. she was super helpful. And I told her what our plan was. I said, at some point in time, I think he's going to want to go back to school. But I know he's not going back to school before high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when it was time to go back, she's the one that kind of helped us put the report card together because... I, I wasn't doing report cards. <laughs> like, I wasn't doing report cards for the last two or three years. I don't uh, know, you know, kind of thing. So, um, and then she kind of guided us and gave us information. So I told my son, I said, hey, either you get into this magnet program or you're, you're, gonna, you're not going to public school. Mm. And the the logic behind that was the school that's we're, we're zoned for, mm. no, honey, you're not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not sending right. <laughs> at all. So I know that that pay, played like a major factor. He understood that. Like I was like, if you get into this school, get into their magnet program, fine, you, you can go back to school. But if you get in, if you don't get in to a magnet program, um, then you can't go to the school with so forth. It's out of the question. It was definitely. He's like, okay, I understand. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> So you and, homeschool during middle school, like the middle school time. Yeah, okay. yeah, the whole the whole middle school, and I think he understood because I think my son also, and I don't know if all homeschool uh, kind of kids understand this: the privilege that you kind of have to kind of be away from the everyday foolery. I don't know if they value it, but my son kind of saw it firsthand, especially when you start looking at the news and you're seeing these young black boys dying or the blah, blah, blah. You're like, you're, you're safe here because, you know, you don't have to go out into the foolishness. And then when we do go outside, you go with me versus you having to get on a bus and travel there and travel back kind of thing. So I think that's another important thing to like making sure our kids are safe all the time. So I'm, I'm sure I'm sure I'm a helicopter mom, but that's not even <laughs> Hey, hey! I mean, how society is set up right now, like it's kind of, it kind of pushes you there. Yeah, it definitely it does. does. How was his transition back to? Um, well, he went to a magnet school, but how was his transition back to school? Um, it was pretty good. He was actually so. Here's the thing with the magnet school: they threaten you early on when you first get there. <laughs> they tell you if your grades aren't this and you don't show up, you can go back to your zone school. You don't have to stay here. And I, and I tap, <laughs> I tap my son like, did you hear? <laughs> He's like, mommy, stop elbowing me. I heard him. I said, I'm good. So um, I think the idea of one and he's he's also full aware that sometimes you go into the schools and for some reason they think our kids may have missed out on something or they're behind mm-hmm. no I, most of the times our kids are ahead of you are ahead yeah yeah so um i told him i said well just make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do and of course c's are failing in this house Aww. see c's are failing like you're on punishment if you come in this house with, you know. Oh, you sound like my mama. <laughs> yes, he's a fail. And he doesn't, here's the thing, he doesn't even have to go to college. I'm not one of those moms who feel like, oh, yes, nice. go to college. But you have to finish your, you have to finish high school though. 
You have to be able to read. You have to be A's and B's that you have to do. And if by some chance you want to go to trade school, I don't care. If you want to go drive a bus for the rest of your life, I don't care. I don't care what you go to, but you're going to finish high school and you're going to finish with A's and B's. And if by some chance you get a scholarship and you want to go somewhere, at least you've given yourself that opportunity to kind of get there as well. And I, and I have to admit, those who do homeschool through high school, I think they some brave souls because I was looking like, I don't think I know how to do this math. Right. <laughs> I'm not even sure I paid attention during this time in school, so I'm not sure. But um, at the same time, I also understand why programs like this are so important, because when we go out and start talking about, like you said, investing and we talk about credit cards and interest rates, the decimals and learning about how to do percentages is where all of that kind of comes in, especially when it comes to calculating your money and the rule of 72 and what's the rule, what's the formula for the rule of 72 kind of thing. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been it's definitely was a journey um, having him transition into school. He did really well. Um, of course, he didn't fail any classes, so I wasn't worried about that. Um, I will say, I will say, you know, just in case there are some homeschooling families who decide to transition, if your son is confident and cocky like mine, he thinks he doesn't have to study because of because of them being, you know, a little more advanced. He mm -hmm. just thinks everything's supposed to come to us, come to come to him easy. That's not the case. Everything doesn't come to you easy. You've just been well prepared over the whole of your life because I've been intentional about your learning. Um, and then even before when he asked me uh, about homeschooling him, one thing that I've been doing since he was probably four and was able to recognize numbers is I was taking him to the ATM. We were going mm. to take out the cash that we were going to spend for the day and then kind of have him say, all right, let's count this out. How much money do we have left? When we run out of money, we're going home <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> And then um, even while he was in public school during elementary school, at no point in time have I ever been a hands-off kind of parent. Mm -hmm. I've always been someone who, here's the, the homework the school gave you. Now here's mommy's homework. He had mommy's homework for like forever. And that might be where he got the idea to be homeschooled from. Because he's right. had mommy homework since kindergarten. There's, the, there's their homework, the little coloring. And he was tired of doing both. He said, hey, hey, <laughs> I'm going to just sign me up for mommy's homework because it's too much. <laughs> I just always felt like the schools wasn't pushing yeah. the kids enough. So I was like, all right, that's their homework. Here's his mommy's homework. And I always tried to stay hands on because he did have one of those projects where what were the benefits of slavery? Mm. He's been one of those kids that have one of those projects. And it's just like, all right, let's let's unpack who's who who benefited this from this. And, you know, let's go from there because I don't want you to think one way when we should be looking at the big picture as well so yes yes yeah so that's how we lesson. got it from. Mm -hmm. nice what's his passion what is what is he into so before it was science so when mm. we were homeschooling he was just like science um but then i think i don't know if it has something to do with the fact that i bought a foreclosed property and mm. there's a lot of work that needed to be done around the house, but the house was completely worth it. But um, there was there's a lot of work that needed to be done around the house. So now he's into construction. Nice. I, I don't know where that comes from. Either. Awesome. <laughs> but I, I would assume that it has something to do with the fact that I bought a foreclosed property and every time you turn around, it was like, all right, the hot water needs to be replaced. Uh, we need to change the kitchen, and you know, can I get a plumber out here? Because the H, the, the um, not the HVAC, the sump pump stopped working, and the basement flooded. So that might have might be what piqued his interest into construction now. So now he's heavily in construction and lacrosse. And lacrosse, what a combo! I was like, okay, I was like, whatever you want to do. And then, I feel um, like that's a big thing in Maryland, lacrosse. I don't know why, but I feel like it is. That and they love football too. So I think Maryland loves like football and lacrosse, and it's just like okay. And I know I went to one of his football games, and I was like, "Well, are you going to teach me the game?" And the guy looks at me, he was like, "You don't know football," and I was like, "Well, just tell everybody." First of all, <laughs> I didn't come here for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, and then I think I think the um, one of the moments that I was like, "Oh, this is pretty cool." Um, when an, a player gets injured, they all kneel. Uh, and I, yeah. I, I was like, oh, that's cool. And everybody's looking at me like, man. Well, you ain't played no sports when you were growing up, huh? 
I ain't play them. I ain't watch them. I think the only person I put, I watched was uh, Shaquille O'Neal. That was that was it. And I just like watching him because I just figured the way he threw his weight around and like I don't have to do much. I could just push you out there if I wanted to. I just, Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. Like you are helping to break cycles, love. Like I love what you're doing. Um, so so needed. So so needed on all spectrums. Like very very much needed so i know that your nonprofit is going to grow into everything you need it to be i know